What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into the Brass Ring Media Podcast for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. Hello. Glad you're here. We're glad to be here. We got a lot to talk about. I'm Zach Haydorn. That's Tyler Sage. Tyler, what's up, man? You know, it's another day. It is It is my birthday today. So What? Oh, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, Happy birthday, uh, bro. Yeah, my birthday is always around WrestleMania. So that's uh, usually a blessing, sometimes a curse, because all sometimes. my kind of birthday parties are around WrestleMania, and there's been some, <laughs> some snoozers in there. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's always good. Um, another year on the earth, an eclipse year, so good good stuff. But yeah, excited to chat. Um, I'm feeling, well, yeah, we'll talk about Raw. Feeling, <laughs> yeah, I, I in the other title you have here i don't have as hot of a take as i did if you if any patrons listen to the uh my take on the wrestlemania main event i have a hot take on the not a hot take but a aggressive take on what's going to happen um on aw dynamite tomorrow and we are going to talk raw uh we are going to talk cody's first night as champion we'll talk raw after mania uh we'll talk the rock and, and everything that happened um, on that show. But before before we do that, though, I want to get into this AEW stuff. I mean, it's, we've been heavy, really heavy, obviously, on WrestleMania content and on WWE content. Um, if you missed that, go back. Hopefully, you will go back and check out some of the work. I was on site in Philadelphia. Tyler and Robert did some uh, awesome stuff uh, remotely, and uh, it was a well-rounded effort and some coverage that I'm very proud of from all – from everybody here and hopefully you guys out there all uh i'll check it out and i'll enjoy it as much as we did um but we've kind of left aw kind of over here and some major news if you want to call it that i suppose dropped over the weekend in conjunction with um in conjunction with wrestlemania um and the news is if you have just been paying attention to wwe um tony khan and the Young Bucks, specifically, the Young Bucks on television, are going to um, reveal the full security footage of the happenings at All In. The fight between, or presumably, what they're making it sound like is that it's going to be, they're going to show video from, you know, the All In brawl with between CM Punk and Jack Perry. Now, initially, my take was, oh, this is a bait and switch. And that's pathetic, you know? I mean, it's just like a pathetic attempt at a, at a bait and switch. Um, but then, you know, some reporters who I trust um, and who get it right quite often are reporting that, no, like that this is legit and they are going to air that footage. And, you know, it's – and then today, Tony Khan confirmed that in an interview with Sports Illustrated um, that it's going to be part of the story, of a story. Um that's where everything stands right now. It's going to be tomorrow night, of course, when this is all this is all going to go down. And I'll just flat out just call it like I hate this. I think this is a terrible idea. I think this is like WCW 2000, you know, Thunder 2000 levels of terrible pro wrestling television. Like and, and, and the first reason why I say that is it's not part of a story. I mean, it's just not part of a story, period. Like, you can try your best if you want to try to, like, you know, kind of rework the past and make it part of a story. But it's not one. CM Punk isn't there. You're not going to have a match about with CM Punk and Jack Perry or the Young Bucks and CM Punk. It, you know, he's not around. And you know, it's not been addressed on AW television for months as to why that, uh, you know, why what happened and why Punk is really gone. It makes absolutely no sense to put this on television at all, let alone under the auspices of, oh, it's 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 story. If it's story, it's a terrible story. And if it's not a story, it is a pathetic attempt at uh, at, at attention, a pathetic attempt to be like uber petty, um, and you know, a complete waste 
of time on national television during prime time when you're already struggling to maintain viewership, to maintain ticket sales, to create an interest in the product. I think this is absolutely awful. And, you know, it's one of those things where tomorrow when we cover the show, you know, I'm look, I mean, I don't see how this doesn't crash and burn. So this is awful. Um, I think Tony should really look in the mirror, you know, in terms of deciding how to do, deciding to do this and why you're actually doing this. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens, but I, I think this is a, a, you know, a really bad turn for AEW right now. Tyler. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I agree with everything you said. So I'm going to like take a little bit of a different angle to not just repeat the same thing. Cause yeah. I think you're spot on as you usually are since we, Aww, agree, so it's your birthday. So I gotta be complimenting you. Well, there you go. well, you always compliment me. I'm always like, cool. And you're always like, great take. And I'm like, <laughs> that was you talk. You were speaking English for sure. You know, I didn't say my, it. I didn't say it folks. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's the, <sighs> This is part of like an ongoing story. Like, what is the story here, right? If this is, even if it makes Punk look bad, right? Let's let's just take like the most generous AEW approach here, right? That CM Punk tackles Jack Perry when he comes out of the curtain and chokes him, and one of Jack Perry's eyes are bulging out of his head, and his <laughs> face is purple, and it looks like it's near manslaughter or murder, right? Like, what does that do? Is Jack That's Perry like, yeah, is Jack Perry coming back and he's a face? Um, and you know, what does this have to do with like, it, did they film something with FTR and the Bucks to be like, hey, after this happened, then this happened, and that's why this tag team match is happening at Dynasty? They both won the tournament. Here's some real backstage stuff that happened between these two because they're fans of CM Punk or they're friends with CM Punk, like. That's yeah. Go ahead. Well, but 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 it wasn't even between them. Like it wasn't like in that case, it wasn't even CM Punk and the Young Bucks. Like somehow, if like if that's what if that's what they're gonna do, they'll try to they're gonna try to connect this to Jet to the to FDR through the Young Bucks who weren't involved and Jack Perry who's not really involved with the Young Bucks on mm -hmm. TV. Like mm -hmm. it it it, just, it falls apart at the seams, man. Like I don't know. Keep going. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> also, it is, you know, what are you trying to baby face? And, and obviously, Tony Khan's trying to baby face himself, right? And that's yeah, the whole reason right. behind this, yeah. which is, like, the, obviously the crux of the issue, right? But let's just take it a step beyond that, right? Let's not even think about Tony Khan. Let's just say this is ethereally happening on AEW Dynamite. There's some deity that is forcing this to happen, right? Uh, this is the same issue I have with the main event of WrestleMania Sunday. Like, we need to move on from an AEW perspective from CM Punk. Like he is not part of the storyline in any way, shape or form. Why is he involved tangentially with anything? Same thing with that. My issue with Undertaker being a part, you know, Cena had beef with solo and we'll, you know, not to get into this again, but it's the same complaint <laughs> I have of like these wrestling companies, like at least that's positive nostalgia that WWE seized on, which is better than, this negative nostalgia that is yeah. the worst or second worst moment in your company's history that you're now reflushing as you have some momentum and you're creating what could be easily the worst moment in your company's history and make these other moments, the interview with punk, the fight with punk, like they're all punk related, all the worst moments in your company's history. <laughs> and you're just like adding one an unforced error of, of some reason. So like, I just don't see any way, shape or form like you. There are just levels of, this is a disaster. And it just depends like which level they hit. There's like, I can't think of one, you know, I'm usually more like, at least for the product itself, maybe not Tony Khan. I'm probably harder on Tony Khan, but like the product on a more regular basis than you, mm -hmm. I would say. Like yeah. you don't, you know, but like I'll give him a break on stuff. Um, but this is like, I can't see one single way of like, you know, the Dr. Strange at the end of infinity war going through like I've went through 8 billion things. There's one way to win here. There's not even a way, one way where this turns out good for AEW besides giving punk some, you know, thing like, Hey, it might make him look really bad. I think he's trying towards being a heel anyway with, you know, with what he's doing and how he's acting from a character standpoint in the ring. So, Hey, 
he looks like a badass who can fight for real. Like, I think he's going to use that as like, that's like the worst case, the best case scenario for AEW is that you make Punk look like a crazy person and Jack Perry comes back and he's a baby face, but he's aligned with Okada and the Bucks who are heels. So like, it's just like a disaster every well, way you go. And not to mention that Jack Perry has been a heel for the last two months since, yeah. you know, he's been a heel in New Japan. He's in the House of Torture faction. <laughs> okay. And... Let's be honest here. Jack Perry's like a five out of ten wrestler, right? And like has, doesn't have any charisma in yes. the ring That's or enough. like in yeah. promos. So like, yeah. So. No, I mean, yeah. We'll, 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 let me pause right there. Let's set the yeah. show. We got some super chats to get to on this topic, and uh, you know, we plan on spending a lot of time on this. So um, good to, to get the conversation going. This is the Brass Ring Media podcast, the flagship show. We do two flagship shows a week. One right now on Tuesday nights, another on Thursday afternoons. Everything right here on the Brass Ring Media YouTube channel. We're also live here on Monday and Wednesday um, afternoons and then Thursday late night uh, with our show Nocturnal Knockout with Robert Vallejos. Um, you can check all those out for free live shows uh, with this style of pro wrestling analysis. Um, if you just hit subscribe, subscribe to our channel subscribe and hit the uh, notification button so you know when we go live and so you don't miss anything. It's a, kind of a primary way to catch some of our free content. We also have a daily newsletter uh, that comes out every single day uh, with show reviews and feature columns and lots of other stuff from our team. Um, you can search Brass Ring Media Substack on your Google machine and uh, we'll be the first thing that comes up. You can subscribe there. That is free as well. If you want to take us and Brass Ring Media to the next level, check us out on Patreon. We have a $4 membership tier, one tier, real simple, $4 gets you access to everything, including um, a free member only podcast once a week, access to our PLE and pay-per-view review shows, which uh, we do have two uh, waiting for you from this past weekend, WrestleMania night one, WrestleMania night two, um, man, over an hour on both, uh, really fun shows to do. So all of our members got to check that out. You also get full access to the newsletter, including the free articles, of course, but also paid articles and then access to the Brass Street Media Discord group, uh, which is a blast. We have some tremendous members um, and uh, always fun to just kick back and talk wrestling there and talk life, talk music, uh, but it's all there for you, patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. We'd love to have you as a member. Now's a great time uh, with WrestleMania content in the rearview mirror and uh, Dynasty coming up, Double or Nothing's coming up, and uh, lots of other great things. So now's a great time, patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. As for today, our Super Chats are open. If you want to get a question in, if you want to get a comment in, please do. Um, every little bit helps in the form of a contribution to us and the show. Um, and we'll make sure to read all your questions and, uh, and, and talk about all your comments live uh, right here before we, before we wrap up. Um, and then of course, if you're checking us out on YouTube here and you're like, Hey, I want to take this on the road. All of our live shows that are on YouTube can be found as podcasts where you get your favorite podcasts just go there, download them, whether it's uh, Apple is a little shaky right now. We're trying to work through that that issue. Spotify is there. iHeart is there. Everywhere else, you know, is uh, is all good. You can take us on the road to the gym, wherever, in the form of an audio show, um, just minutes after uh, we're done uh, going live here. So keep that in mind as you try to um, hopefully keep up with our uh, with our content. On a and the Patreon basis. as well, all the free stuff we post for free. So you don't have to be a member to find the free shows in podcast form on the Patreon as well. So yes. you can see how that site works as well. That's right. <clears throat> Look at that mm -hmm. plug on your birthday from the top rope. Bam. Um, there you go. Yeah, hopefully I don't end up like Ricochet last night. Oh, oh man. man. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. That was a crazy spot. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's get some uh, let's get some super chats here. And one of the and one of the things that I wanted to talk about as far as this goes is like, you know, you can try to make CM Punk look as bad as you want. You can try to think that this is going to embarrass him. You can try to think that boy, we're really going to dig WWE here. But in the end, isn't aren't you essentially like promoting a star? That's not on your 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 TV. I mean, people are not tuning in to see Jack Perry like try to kick CM Punk's ass. Like, I, I think people are tuning in 
to see what CM Punk did and like promoting a, a, a star that's not yours. And Adam says something similar. CM Punk's going to get them a huge number. Yes, that's what I mean. Like you're leaning on the shoulders of this guy that's not there um, as you're like, Big selling point of the show. That's not good. Adam also says, this is not a good move on TK's part, in my opinion. Uh, well, you're not alone in that opinion, um, Adam. And thanks so much for contributing to the show. Uh, Punk will be unscathed. Another comment uh, from Adam here. Um, yeah, I don't see how he is. But take that, Tyler. I mean, wh like, what? How does this come off? Like, I know you kind of already said it, but this is Tony Khan promoting CM Punk still, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if you look at the breakdown of like, hey, here's, you know, the Twitter thing of like, here's the card for tomorrow. It's a little innocuous, but then, yeah, I was combing through that article that you had mentioned while you were doing your preamble and your your opening statement on this. And it's like, yeah, he's, he's promoting him. And it's like the last 72 hours, and I'm not happy about this, like I see why Vince did a lot of things the way he did it, right? Like in as as like a booker, right? A promoter, yeah, sure. not anything else outside, obviously. But like, like as soon as you're out of the company, you are dead to the company, right? And that is like a good way to move forward on anything good, bad, or <laughs> ugly, right? You just like, hey, they're not with us anymore. Everything that happened, it's gone and it's over, right? Like that's a pretty good way to deal with this in professional wrestling when guys bounce back and forth and, you know, that's letting up in WWE, like mentioning Sasha Banks, you know, like in, in, you know, on Sunday, right. Just like little things like right. that, that would never happen. And, you know, I think some things are good and bad to do that. I think that's totally fine. Like she's a legend in that company will be a hall of famer when she's yeah. back and all that stuff. So, and she already has said that she's going to be back there someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, you don't burn a bridge with something like that that you know is happening. And, yeah, yeah that's not yeah. a great thing either for AW. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're promoting that. It's like, what is even the equivalent? Is that, like, literally promoting CM Punk, like, did his podcast with Colt Cabana that, you know, was one of the first the first times he talked about his WWE run. <clears throat> and if, like, like hey, um, Doc Smith – has a promo backstage with JR and he's going through CM Punk's medical report to open <laughs> raw next week. Like it would be crazy and it would not work. It will put get punk over huge with, with everybody that is there. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane. And you are, um, yeah, you're just promoting a guy who's never going to be in your company again. No. Say never on that one. I would say it's pretty safe. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just wild. Right. Like, it's like, I mean, like them talking about Cody is one thing is like a respect thing, but like punk is like the, the absolute last person you want to talk about in, within AEW. And like I said, he, this will be a top three bad moment. I think in the, in the reputation and history, the, the documentary, the book written on if AEW doesn't succeed, you know, 10 years from now yeah. and CM Punk is part of all three of them. It's like, you got to quit. I like guess he's like a bad boyfriend. You got to drop yep. that. You got to drop, drop that guy. Drop that so, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, some more from uh, from from Adam here. And Adam, thank you so much for contributions. Um, Adam says Punk is still their biggest star. And then uh, <laughs> call, says five out of ten <laughs> is generous. Tyler, comparing uh, in terms of uh, Jack Perry as a, to a good wrestler. Um, sorry, Jack, but it's you know the facts are facts are facts. Yeah. Um, what is WWE two K? Two oh, well, rating being hmm. like a, a 72. What was, what was Miz? Uh, Miz probably like a 79 or an 81, something like okay, that. Okay, then I think this is, I think he'd clock in at like 68, maybe. Yeah, does he, does I mean, he even like, go that low? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure somebody like who's the jobber of the stars on what's um, Maxine Dupree? Yeah, I don't know, but that's probably where Jack Perry would be. So hopefully higher than that, but um. Uh, so Zach, uh, we got a couple from Zach here too that I want to get to because he's got a different opinion, and we welcome those on uh, on the show. It's going to make for some good debate here in about five seconds. Um, Zach says here, Jack Perry is going to be set up for a huge return. I mean, maybe it depends. It depends, and and huge in what way? Like I I don't I don't see how airing this makes his return any bigger than it just would be other 
in any other context. That's where I that's where I disagree with you. I'm not. I think they could get like. And first of all, a big, a huge return for Jack Perry. I mean, come on. We got to be like reasonable in terms of how we talk about this. He's set for a return um, to the company, and he's probably going to get like. I can see him like maybe jumping in with the Young Bucks and Okada here as part of like that new the new elite faction. But a huge return. I mean. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's exactly where he was in the card before, maybe a little lower. And remember, you know, he was having pre-show matches with Hook when he left. Yeah. So, you know, this is not like, so no, I, I, I got to push back on the huge return thing. I, I don't think this sets him up for anything that you couldn't just do without the circus of this. Yeah. I mean, he's setting up for, you know, to lose to what Orange Cassidy or Adam Copeland for a mid card title, like that's yeah, what, that's probably. what that's like his peak right now, right? His ceiling from a booking perspective. Like, and, and how does that portray him? Like, a he looks like a guy who got choked out by a brittle old man, right? If, if that's how you want to frame him, which is I think a good way to frame him, and yeah. uh, so that's not good. Or what? Like, I, I just don't know how it frames him as a badass or as anything other than like a guy who ran his mouth and, well, you know, and Joe saved his ass, right? Like, he needs to be like, thank kissing Joe's feet, I think, is, is after this video of how Joe saved him. And, you know, I don't know. And how and, Tony Khan feared for his life and all that. Well, that's you know, the other hope, thing. <laughs> like, we, this wasn't like these two guys like fought each other. Like, apparently, it went down and Punk was so scary and so much of a badass and scared everybody backstage so bad that people were fearing for their lives and Punk had to be fired. Like, how does that paint Jack Perry in, like, I mean, at that point, it's not about Jack Perry. They Like, it's a total, like, heat job on, on, on Punk, you know, to show how menacing he was or whatever. Like... Like, I don't even, I, honestly, Zach, I don't even know. I don't think this is about Jack Perry. I really don't. Like, I, I think whatever Jack Perry gets out of this is like, okay, it is what it is. But I mean, look, he's a house of torture mid Carter. Like, you know, come on. Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they could, if he can do something with it. But he hasn't been able to turn anything into it yet. That's for yeah. sure. And like, let's say there's not like, it's, let's say it's like footage that sets up like FTR and, Young Bucks, right? While that is a bait and switch, and like it would be a double bait and switch because Tony Khan said it didn't happen. Like maybe someone will talk him into not showing this footage and leaking it in six months to somebody. Um, like, is that like, hey, Tony Khan's a, a joke on his announcements and we move on and forget about this? Like, that's is that the best case scenario here? Yes. Or is it yes. like literally CM Punk looks like a maniac who should probably have, you know, charges pressed against him, right? Like, are those the two best options, I guess? But even then, it's like you're petty and you should release that to whatever. To I don't even know who you release it to to make it not look just totally yeah. whatever. But I looked up the guy that did the Sports Illustrated um, interview today. Mm -hmm. He's done like, pay, like pre show panel work with like Sam Roberts on like NXT. So I'm, I'm curious why Tony Khan thought that was like the greatest place to go for. An interview to give. Oh him. yeah, he's yeah, just Justin Barat, Barat, yeah. Barasso, which is like whatever. I mean, everyone in our industry that has any sort of credence is, uh, you know, doing stuff like that because, you know, they all want to be on the show. So just pointing that out as my constant takedown on wrestling journalism. Well, and and I mean, and and you know, he knows where to like Tony Khan knows where to go on this kind of this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay, more from Zach here because I want to get into some the, the counter the counterpoint here. Um. Uh, Zach jumps in real quick on my WCW 2000 comments. Says, WCW 2000 was disorganized. Uh, he says, throwing things at the wall, level of chaos. This isn't that. Dude, man. I I mean, look, first of all, I want to thank you for, you know, kind of tossing in a dissenting opinion because it's – hopefully we create a safe space where that can happen. I just disagree with this vehemently. Like I think that's exactly what this is. This is, well, this is gonna get this is gonna get some kind of number. So let's just whip this at the wall and see what and see what's what. Like this is this. I categorize this in the exact same way, if not worse, because like 
it wasn't this isn't just bad creative like this is this actually happened and you don't need to show this to anybody and you're going to anyway so i um yeah i don't classify that as this in the same way um yeah Tyler, might be, i'll let you go ahead it might be worse like obviously like ww 2000 like was fi not financially secure as the merger was happening and it was getting cut off the line item list but <clears throat> let's say it survived one of the hogan uh, when did the late? When did the Jeff Jarrett lay down job happen? Is that is that two thousand? Two thousand, yeah, yeah. So let's say that happens, and that's Hogan's. That's the last time Hogan's in WCW, right? Is that match right there? The... I think. Or did he work like a Nitro after that or something? I can't remember the timeline. I honestly, I don't remember the timeline on that either. Yeah. But that's I mean, kind even, of it's not a lot. He didn't. Yeah. yeah, not a lot. I mean, that's like the end of WCW, right? Everything else is like not even worth is except for the last episode of nitro right it's kind of like not worth getting into from like right. a historical perspective right yeah, exactly. so imagine wcw survives and it's 2002 2003 and eric bischoff vince russo's like hey we got footage of hulk hogan acting like an absolute crazy person that night in nashville wherever they were you know let's say it's after the 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 hogan and and rock WrestleMania match and like a week two weeks later they show this footage of him being a diva and being like totally horrible to everybody like that's what this is like yeah this is worse than what like WCW 2000 did for this specific instance right like I don't yeah. think I think AW is way better like week in and week out the booking is better all that sort of stuff right like but there's just one instance like this is worse than WCW 2000 levels of just like the the like it's a it's like I, I mean there's obviously worse things you could do if you're Tony Khan. You could say something like racist on Twitter, or you could there's a myriad of other things you could do. There could be a scandal that he mistreats employees or a sexual scandal like Vince, whatever, right? But from like a benign, doesn't really hurt anybody, just makes you look like a bozo, this is like the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, more from Zach here. Zach says, CM Punk, and this, we're going to tie this right to another uh, to another Super Chat. So thank you, Zach, for contributing and getting your opinion out there. Um, Zach says, CM Punk asked for this. All I had to do was keep his mouth shut. Now he's opened Pandora's box. Um, and also, AEW did move on. CM Punk and Ariel Hawani brought it back up. So, yes, they did. They did. Um, and I would have no problem, truthfully, I would have no problem if Tony Khan went, man, like, F that guy. I've got footage. Like, I'm going to go do an interview with Ariel Hawani, or I'm going to go do an interview with somebody else and do this, like, outside of the cadence of your, your television show, man. Like, if you want, like, this, it's not like CM Punk said this on Raw as part of, like, a promo with Drew McIntyre to build a match with Seth Rollins. Like, like no. He was in a, you know, in a real-world interview, you know, where, you know, and, and the lines were blurry by the end of that day with Ariel Hawani. But generally speaking, Ariel does at interviews with, with folks, fighters, other wrestlers. Becky was on there, you know, not too long ago, addressing real-life things. And that was the environment that Punk was in. So it's not the same at all of going, okay, we're going to put this on TV as part of our show. That is my, that's like my issue. If Tony Khan wants to fight back and go, wait a minute, this is BS. He's calling me a clown on TV. I got footage. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not standing for this. And he wants to take it to the media and like do something like that. Okay. Like fight that battle there if you want. But you can't do it on television. It, it's it, it's infinitely worse that way, and that's why I think both those both these things are totally different. Yeah, Punk brought it up, but he did not bring it up as CM Punk the wrestling character, which is what Tony Khan is promoting that the Young Bucks are going to do tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, even that I think is a rough strategy, right? Of like, let, let's say he went on. I know you're not advocating for it. No, no. Like, right. I'm not. if this is like a ten out of ten bad idea, I think like <laughs> him going on. What what is it like? Wrestling is that what it's called? The 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 
Barstow. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah. That he like, obviously, it's like his more his guys. Or if he went on Levitard, right? He's been on the Dan Levitard show a lot. Um, or if he went on with Ariel, right? If he's like, hey, Ariel, we're doing an interview. Uh, yeah. like he would take it. I would assume. Oh, absolutely. He would. And it'd be like, yeah. hey, I got the footage. We're showing this footage live or whatever, right? Or if you did it on Pat McAfee, anything, right? <laughs> like, uh, that would be like an eight out of ten. I would love. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be like an eight out of ten on like bad decisions, right? You'd at least you did it like only where the people on the online wrestling public know it's happening and you can like act like it's not happening on tv right now show, you have to have like yeah. yeah now you have to have excalibur tony khan or i'm sorry tony shivani taz like all kind of talk about this in a match later like why like this guy so and the, here's the main crux of this for me like in, in american culture i'm curious if we have anyone that's outside i know we're late um it's like 4 a.m in england right now but like at least in american culture i think the issue here is like punching down and if you're the billionaire talking about the talent, right? You were punching down from a like socioeconomic standpoint. And like, you can never win when you're punching down on someone quote unquote lower on the, you know, societal ladder from a financial standpoint, right? Like if Howard Schultz is on an investor car for investor call for Starbucks and directly says like, Hey, these stores unionizing are bad because they X, Y, Z, they here's some footage of them not washing their hands after they go to the bathroom. This is why we need to not unionize because we can't trust these people. Whatever, right? Like he says things in 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 a uh, investor calls that are like disparaging, but in like a boring corporate way, right? That is the right way to do it, right? And the yeah. issue here is like you are doing the not right way to do it, right? Is it all semantics? Yes, but that is like the name of the game as a public figure of like you got to make sure your image is good and not yep. look like a guy who is feuding with CM Punk fan one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, A, B, C, D on Twitter, which is what this is, right? And like, I don't know how you take that seriously if that person's your boss. If you're trying to like, I don't, you know, he seems to have multiple inner circles that have tried to tell him like what is a good thing to do and not to do. And it seems like that's not like a great um, spot to be in, you know, SQT, ask like the first set of, you know, Mm-hmm. EVPs and, and people associated with it. So that's like more the issue from like a, a big standpoint. If you ask like people outside of the wrestling business, like, hey, this guy worked for this guy. One's a billionaire, one's a millionaire. And the other one said something happened and this guy's now going to show it on TV to make the other guy look bad. Like every single person could be like, well, that's like uh, bad. That's I'm going to go with the millionaire on this one. You know, same, whatever, right? I mean, I can do a million examples here, but that's the issue. Whether you like him or not, or like either of these guys or not, again, I think Tony Khan is a way probably nicer person to interact with and hang out with and probably a nicer person in general than CM Punk. But like, this is just not the right way to deal with the situation. So, Tracy um, is jumping in on our Super Chats. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you, Zach, for your perspective. Um, you know, We'll see what happens. We'll see what it what does. Maybe, maybe. I guess, you know, there's always a possibility that it'll move in the needle huge and you know, they'll capitalize on it. I don't know why. So, but we'll see. But uh, thank you for speaking up. Uh, Tracy says, what's your opinion on if Tony Khan showed that in an interview rather than on the show? Happy birthday, Tyler. Um, yes. Happy birthday, Tyler. And thanks, Tracy. Yeah. You know, I think we kind of, we kind of, we kind of hit that. I, I just, to me, I don't think it's a good idea anyway to do that, mm-hmm. um, to do it in general. But I mean, I a hundred percent think that if it's, put it on the air or take care of it in an interview. If like you have to do it, there's no question you go the interview route. No question that you go that route. Um, so that's what I think is so disappointing. Is there's an easier way to kind of do this and a more professional way. And I think he's taken like just the worst, the worst path as of right now. Yeah. And I don't know over there if it's easy, if there's like, you know, FOIA over there in the UK. Like I literally have no idea, but I assume you could like FOIA that footage too. So like there'd be a way to like, this happens a lot, right? I mean, this is like outside the scope of wrestling, but there's a lot of, let's say top tier uh, intelligence reporters for big time newspapers and websites 
that have contacts with people that know how to get like, Hey, you should probably do a FOIA for this guy of medical history on this date. And you might get something who knows, right? Like that's, Mm -hmm. they know what they're doing with that's with that journalist, right? Like Tony could have done that too. Is that any better from a, like a moral standpoint? Probably not. But again, his image would look way better if real reporter dropped this, you know, let's say some people that reported on Vince McMahon for the wall street journal. If you gave them a tip, because you can contact them pretty easily if you look it up. Yep. And uh, and they're like, hey, this company where Vince was happening, they now have this guy who does this, you know, at work. Should they be hiring? You know, is that good for a publicly traded company to have one of their main stars do this? Like, that's the way to do this. Yeah. Like, right. So. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, thanks, Tracy. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, all right. So the last thing on this is, um, you know, the other option here is that it is a bait and switch and the more we talk about it i'm like i i i just can't fathom this actually happening on the air so it makes me think like all right what how else do they do they do this maybe they you know just toss out some ideas as to how they're going to try to integrate this into like the tv like i think you're i think you're right on the money with your young bucks ftr like it's going to play into that somehow because they're going to have a match at dynasty for the titles. Um, so my guess is that that's how they try to finagle this, this in. And, and again, that's why I said to Zach earlier, like, I don't think Jack Perry is even in the cards on this. I think that, you know, they're going to do this to try to further that match. That'll be the excuse. Is that where your head's at Tyler on how they'll actually integrate this in? Or is it something else that we're not thinking of? Yeah. Cause I you're mean, right. So like, because I real quick, like you're right, yeah. like Excalibur has to talk about it, Tony Schiavone has to talk about it, the Young Bucks have to talk about it, FTR has to respond to it. So they have to have something in mind that that I would assume you know takes this from a story perspective, but you know, I guess we don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh do you remember what the Bucks did at All In? I hate to put you on the spot. I don't do they wrestle FTR? I think they wrestled FTR, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, maybe it's just something post match. I don't remember how that finished. I think the Bucks were still baby faces, right? Yeah, it had to be. So, yeah. FTR were the heels, or just like a two baby face match? Two baby face match. They lost FTR, thank you, Zon, in the chat. So, maybe that's where they say their heel run started and they, I don't know, they were wronged <laughs> by. FTR and there's some footage that you can say like, oh yeah, that's I I don't know like that's then a bait and switch completely right and I don't know what that does. Maybe they tie. I don't know. I don't know. I like <laughs> now that I don't want to obviously I talk about this forever, but like I don't know, man. Like it's there's too still hard. yeah yeah there's still 23 hours before Tony's gonna do this. Um, I don't know. I, there's time to still just like drop this if you're him. I think that'd be the best case scenario completely, right? Yeah. If you don't see the Young Bucks on tomorrow's show at all and they don't talk about this and they just move on, like that would show some real clarity by Tony Khan. So, yes, it would. It would. Um, all right. Last super chat on this from Azan. Azan says, would punk games from the aerial stuff and why Brian and Mox, why are not, why are Brian and Mox not stepping, stepping up to this stuff over and under on Jack showing up? at the pay-per-view. Um, I mean, my take, my uninformed personal opinion is they're not stepping up for this because they think it's a bad idea. They know it's a bad idea. Like I, so no, they're not getting listened to backstage right now on this. I can't imagine John Moxley and Brian Danielson would think that this is a good idea. Um, just being where they've been in the wrestling industry um, at the highest of high levels. So, um, and I would say that, you know, I, I definitely would take I'm not really what I'm not really sure what you're setting the over under at is on, but I'm taking Jack Perry to show up for sure. Like, I, I think he returns here um, with all this with all this craziness, it's, it's, especially it sets up some forbidden door match too, like a group like yes. BCC versus House of Torture, which Torture. God, save us Ooh. as like as like one of let's say, you know, Brian Danielson has uh, six matches left. If one of them involves evil, like man, no, <laughs> don't put it out there. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. So, uh, but I so curious, like uh, your point there, who, who would think this is a good idea backstage? Well, 
I mean, the Bucks because yeah. they're yeah. So that's you know I think you know you can copy paste a lot of stuff and I you know Young Bucks QT, are very important. QT maybe. Yeah, is QT back officially? He's back. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so just like copy paste everything we're saying about Tony Khan with anyone that would green light this idea, I think. Um, right. So it's not a. I dislike Tony Khan's decision making and love everyone in AEW either. At least from my perspective, speaking for myself. You could copy paste everything I've said on anyone that's like, yeah, boss, this is great. Let's do it. So <laughs> let's do it. Some great idea. Yeah. Someone wants to be the Bruce Pritchard of AEW, and that's not the way to go, in my opinion. But <laughs> for sure not. For sure not. All right. We'll um we'll see. We'll see in about 24 hours' time. We'll uh talk about it all on our flagship show on Thursday. Um, break it down what just what the heck happened. But let's pivot over to um let's pivot over to Monday Night Raw and uh the fallout of WrestleMania. Um this week on the show, Cody opens with Triple H, Paul Levesque, um heavy-handed Cody stuff, like heavy on the emotion. <laughs> yeah, have shocking. Are you heavy sure? On, heavy I on I was light. <laughs> Heavy on the heart on his sleeve, all like you know, super Cody Cody stuff to start to start the show. Um, in fairness, big big reaction, really big pop um, for Paul Levesque and for for Cody. Um, Cody talks about winning the title, does that, confronted by the Rock, and they essentially set up a match, you know, for a, a future date. So that's I'm paraphrasing what was a forty minute. Uh, promo segment um but that's essentially what happened we'll start with a super chat from sean yeah. it says uh i can't stay on but happy birthday tyler i'm so thankful to be a brass ring media member and i will go back and listen tonight um thank you so much aw just needs to focus on their product yes they do and mania was so fun i'm excited for cody's reign so Use this as a we're going to use this as a launching pad. Thank you, Sean, um, for the comments and for the contribution and for being a member. Appreciate you. Uh, Patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. Go ahead. I was just saying thanks, Sean, especially for the well wishes. Appreciate oh, it. That's nice. Um, what do you think of night one? Um, I I won't even load up the question first. You, you oh, give me your your opinion. Oh, night yeah, night one. Yeah, I forget that we've talked about this for two hours, but it's only for our very exclusive club of, of, of yeah, friends so that have heard our deep, <laughs> deep takes. But yeah, I liked night one. Um, I thought night one was more fun than night two. I enjoyed the main event. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, well, oh. you can keep going. I meant You're about raw. Was, I went night one of Cody's reign. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if we were That's doing like a quick synopsis for our uh, our. Uh, you, gotta, you, gotta be a, you gotta be a Patreon member. You know okay, you yeah, mean? okay. I'm just following your lead. Okay, yes. Um, besides having the like strangest interaction with a top guy, probably like ever in in WWE, with like, oh, can I hold your belt? Yeah, if I can hold yours. Again, like, I like trying new stuff. This didn't work for me, but you know, hey, they tried something new instead of you know there wasn't a table that they went through, right? So that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, it was like they need to they need to tone it down big time. He needs a challenger. Hopefully, we get that on Friday um, and establish like, hey, he's going to be on Friday or like until the draft. He's on both shows, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, he needs a reason to defend the stronghold he's created right within WWE. This new era, he needs to be the vanguard for mm -hmm. you know. For what that is, right? So that's you know they need to establish that by next SmackDown, right? I think that's their time limit of getting him into something and getting away from, you know, him on the on the stump, um, talking about how he won the election and now he's gonna, you know, he's getting inaugurated in a couple of weeks. So here's like mm -hmm. the platform that Cody is gonna be for you as a as a WWE voter. So this fine on that front i mean it's it's the day after right the 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 raw after mania i think has devalued itself probably for good reason over the last 10 years yeah, of like i think so you don't you're not expecting a huge star to come and like change the whole next year right because you can't do it every year so i think it was like fine from that front and i liked the main event and all that. but yeah i think it was fine how about you yeah yeah i i i I'm in lockstep. I mean, I'm in lockstep. I, I, I like what they did. I like the 
I like, you know, I like Cody going out there and kind of basking in that glory. I think it's, you had to, you had to do it. You had to do it uh, because it's kind of like Cody's whole thing. Like his thing is that it's wearing a hard on sleeve. It's the emotional drama. It's like crying. Like, like, so, you know, I think it's okay to lean into that on this night, on that night. I think you want to play that card. That's when you play it. That's when you play it. Um, and you let him bask in that glory. You let the crowd give him the response that they gave him. You, you know, you let them get on your side opposite rock. You set up the, the future big match between the two. Like that all thumbs up for me. And I thought Cody carried himself. Well, it was a little awkward with the rock. Um, but I, you know, I just, I don't know that they completely stuck the landing on it, but I, I get what they're going for in terms of like rock rock's trying to elevate that title with him, you know, with him holding it. He's trying to like, I, I thought rock, if you take out the weirdness of like trading the belts, like he had a slow cadence. He totally pivoted from like his normal, like bombast, you know, you know, the way he talks to the crowd, he was not trying to like be like baby face rock at all. I thought like that was an interesting pivot from him, like stylistically to just, you know, he's, like if they're going to do that match, he has to like be all in on being a heel. And this like reminded me of Jericho kind of taking away all the bombast of that character to kind of do that suit gimmick. And just, it, it, it didn't feel very, it didn't feel right watching it at first. Cause it's just, uh, it's just kind of like, Oh, like, what is this? But I think that's kind of what he needs. If he's going to like go down this road and try to be like a true heel against Cody at some point in a one-on-one -on -one match. So that's going to be interesting to explore. Um, the last thing I'd say on it is, so I like it thumbs up the, to your point, And I totally agree. This can't be the promo for the next four episodes of WWE television and Cody. Like you had the night to do it. You did it. It worked. Um, and now you've got to know when to pull back. Like it has to be like, you're done chasing. You're done chasing. Now you're going to, now you got to build your legacy. Now you got to defend the title. Now you got to like make, you know, make new stories that way. Um, and so I kind of like maybe on SmackDown, you can get away with it a little bit because it's a different show, um, different audience, but come next week, like he has to have like a different, a totally different scope on how he talks to about himself and his character and being the champion because he's on the mountaintop, as he said. So you can't talk about getting there over and over and over again while you're standing up there. Like you got to talk about something else. And so mm -hmm. that is key, I think, in, in in how this works out going forward. Do they recognize that enough to pivot from it? And we'll see. We'll see soon enough. But I completely agree that like we can't have this same Cody like you know, it's talking about how how great it was to win the title, you know, even even like 10 days from now, I think it's 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 too much. It's too much. Did you think rocks? Well, let me preface this. Do you know Poochie from The Simpsons? No, I do Itchy, not. Itchy and Scratchy is the cartoon that the kids watch. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. So it's yep. like early on they had in the series, they had this char third character Poochie and Homer does the voice. And it's so poorly received that uh, in the middle of an episode, they're like, oh, I have to go back to my home planet now. And they like the frame. Do you see like the, the, the single oh, frame? No. Like, on, like lift up and it's like, that's kind of what, I, not that it was poorly received, but the rock being like, I've got to go away for a while. This reminded yeah. me of Poochie uh, from the <laughs> Simpsons. I feel like I got somebody uh, as a reference, but um, did you like that of like, Hey, you, like, I'm just be honest with you. Like, I'll see you guys later. Um, does that work for you? Or should he have been more heelish about it? Or do you not care? Whatever. Because we all know he's not, you know, being up, he's not going to be in France at Backlash. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm okay with it. I, Cause I think it is innately heel anyway, you know, to like, to do that. And like, for whatever reason, like they've made, WWE's made that like a heel, a heel move, frankly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I think it's, I think that's okay if you're trying to get heat. Like if he was a babyface rock trying to do that, you know, or it was, Cody, who's like, yep, I won this title and now I'm going to see you later. Like, see you in a little bit. I got some other things to do. Like, thumbs down for sure. But I think yeah. Rock as a heel, it's it's okay. I'm okay with 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 it. Cool. Well, what about you? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, we all know. And like, you know, The Rock is The Rock, right? 
if he stays full time, then he's not the rock. Right? That's it. Yeah. He right. is the rock, but he's not the rock, but he's not. The and rock. Yeah. I just do the one thing, like when he comes back, he's got to like beat down Cody or Jay or Seth or whoever that's closely associated with Cody. Like he cannot just like appear on a SmackDown randomly, you know, if you're so male, and, like, right, he's going right. to be super over. Like he's got to like, Cody's got to get like a big win on TV, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Owens on TV defense for Roman Reigns type stuff where it's built or like a Matt Riddle, right? Was that like a TV match? Yeah. So something like that where it's like, oh, hard fought win. And then Rock comes out and just obliterates him and he's bleeding there on the stage and in front of everybody. Like that's how he's got to come back. And then you get a match out of that. So I'd like, I think they know that. But if, if you don't appear like that, like he's going to get cheered and you have to do all the work over again. So yeah. I- Agree. Totally agree. Uh, we've got Andy um, chiming in via super chat. Well, the rock was entertaining the dynamic of Cody as the babyface on a hero's journey versus the unbeatable champ reigns ended up being much more compelling. Um, I, well, Tyler, what do you think? I, I tend to agree with this. Um, except that, and, and I think I agree only because I have the perspective of like the co- the rain story ending, like it's over, <laughs> like it ended, like the Cody thing is Rock said last night, not to like you know cool the Rock on a TV show, but like their story is really just starting out, you know. So I I uh, I don't want to hedge here, Andy, but I I feel like it's tough tough to argue either way at this point because we just don't know where the rock thing is going and the and the roman thing was so epic and so good for business and so compelling for so long that it it it, it kind of like at this point it like well like okay you had one good chapter of this book but like you have this like epic book that's done like you know everybody's going to say that 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 the complete book is is better you know at the, than one than one like good chapter and i think that's kind of the comparison here so so yes, I agree and theoretically, um, but I also think there's a lot of nuance around that answer. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's 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 hard to it's like impossible not to just like they're the same thing, right? Like the Rock story and the Roman story are so tied together here for Cody. That too, yeah, that too. And yeah. like the story wasn't really a rebuttal of last year's turn of events. I know it was, but again, it was like from a match psychology standpoint as opposed to like the actual story that was verbalized between the parties um yeah which is like interesting that you would think like okay of course like he screwed over and like yes that's how the story unfolded but like cody very rarely talked about beating roman specifically right it was more that like ethereal like both of you the bloodline you're what's wrong with wwe we're here all the like I don't know. It was just, uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. It obviously worked right from start to finish, but it's like what it's such a different story with the rock and the bloodline that I think it did take a backseat, the Roman and Cody storyline. I mean, just look at the match, right? Mm-hmm. Like the match itself, obviously the pinning is probably the number one thing, but everything else doesn't involve Roman and Cody. That is yeah. like epic about that, which is not the story of Cody and Roman. So, yeah. Well, and I, and I think too, like, like it depends on like what I think also like, what are you, what is the more compelling part? Like if it's, if it's, you know, Roman versus Cody on WrestleMania 40, like then I think, yes, that's, that's less compelling than the rock stuff. But if you're talking like Roman's entire run as champion, the whole bloodline saga coming to the end, coming to an end. And that's like, that's, and, 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 and Cody is like the, you know, the protagonist, like in that super four year story arc, well then like that's a different, you have to look at that entirely, entirely differently too. Cause it takes on a whole new meaning when you take in to account Roman's entire run. Um, that I think is a significant, significant talking point here too. Mm-hmm. Um, what, uh, what did you, well, let's, let's finish up this Cody stuff here with a super chat from Zach. And Zach says, there's going to be an asterisk next to Cody's win. In a way, Brett, HBK, Austin, Cena, Brian, or Becky never had, given everything that led to Cody's win. So we talk a lot about how Cody got this win um, on our VIP member-only review shows at WrestleMania. Um, so check that out for sure. Um, 
I don't want to put words in your mouth, Tyler, but like, I'm not sure where you stand on this. Like do you, you didn't like the main event um, of night two and were vocal about that and had, you know, specific reasons and examples to back it up. Um, but you didn't go so far as to say that like, this is an asterisk next to Cody's title win. So do you agree with this or do you not agree with this statement? Uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> an asterisk next to someone's title win. Um, I would say no, right? Because that's the story they decided to tell, right? An asterisk to me would be like, I don't know, John Cena winning that one money in the bank where he definitely wasn't supposed to get the briefcase down, and he did. You could just tell <laughs> on his face, and then he cashed in and did not win, right? Because that was against plans. That's oh, like an asterisk money in the that. bank win, right? Like if. You know, if if he got knocked out on a spear for real and didn't kick out, or whatever, right? If if Roma would have been knocked out on the what he hit two crossroads before everything started happening and he kicked out, two, like if yeah. Roma if Roma would have gotten a concussion and knocked been knocked out cold and not kicked out and the ref counted, that's an asterisk win, right? Because it's not what was supposed to happen. It was an audible, what have you, right? It's Penta's run with the international title. Yeah, right? that's, yeah. that's an asterisk run. So, you know, it's more semantics, I think. The difference between Zach and I, I think Zach and I agree on the point. And that, that was, like, the crux of my whole point of, like, you know, you need to make stars. And, like, none of these stars that are all-time legends um, in their biggest moment of their careers needed stars of the past to come and make it happen, right? That's also not the story they decided to tell. But I think that was for the best that they did not decide to tell that story as well. So... You take that for what you will, but I guess we just have different terms for what this was. I think it's just like a shame for the industry as a whole. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think like, look, like Brett, when Brett won the title for the first time, like, I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think you guys have to remember the circumstances around, around these, around these wins, you know, like Austin, I mean, Austin had Tyson in his back pocket, you know, like, so mm -hmm. like that's. Because he knew DX was around, you know, and he, so like, I think you could find little things in here where it's like, okay, you know, like that, that, that there's something more there. This is not, they're not all just clean wins. A lot of them are, but a lot of them, most, all of them, I would say, didn't encompass this like broader, bigger story that has, go, that goes along with this, with this win. And I think that, I think that WWE like wanted to, to give, to pay lip service to the, the epicness of Roman losing the belt. Now, you, I'm not saying you have to like how they did it, but I think they wanted it to be that the ending of that to be more than just like, you know, uh, you know, HBK beating Brett, you know, and that's it. And now, that, cause that was all that was going on. HBK and Brett, that was it. Um, yeah. Three crossroads is not going to cut it. Right. Was, was like the issue they had. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, like, especially because of how, how big it was. So, so yes. And then the other thing I say is like the asterisk thing, like no way, like no way. I mean, this was a more so than, than some of these guys, like more so than, than Becky, more so than, than Daniel Bryan, um, more so than Cena. Even if you remember back to, you know, he won the title at WrestleMania in the middle of the card for the first time. Um, this was, this is a crowning era defining champion. Like that's what they did. That's what they did here. Now we don't know if it's going to work, but that's what they tried to do. And like Fightful reported today that Cody did a million dollars in merch sales over the weekend. He's, is at the today show. He, you know, this is, this is not, this is not Daniel Bryan. Like, all right, well, I guess we have to do this. So let's do it. Like, it's bigger than that. So I, I don't, I don't, I think this is not going to be looked at that way, provided it works out. I think if we have a long run of Cody at the top as a baby face, um, this will be like an all timer WrestleMania that, that, you know, that WWE as a company frames up as, you know, this, this epic, this epic, this epic moment. So I'm, I'll disagree with you there, Zach. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good bonus for Cody. On that, you see uh, yeah, bonus? <laughs> that's a great that's, bonus. That's, I mean, it's fifty k, right? It's still five percent, right, of merch. I, I mean, I, I don't know what. It, I mean, that's what it used to be. That's what it yeah. used to be. So you see, I Rock got Rock got a little bit of a bonus. I don't know if you saw that. 
He got over bonus. Oh, he got ninety six thousand shares of TKO today. Or was oh yes. Oh today. God. No, I didn't no, see which is, that. Which is really like eight point six million dollars if he were to cash out. So uh, from Vince McMahon to The Rock. So from hey, that's Vince good. McMahon to the Rock. Hey, that's a positive. That's a positive. That's a positive. Unless so more news of, about the rock. Unless it, you know. Anyway, I'll, I digress. Well, speaking yeah, of which, I wanted to yeah. go down this angle because yesterday on Raw, I mean, and and at WrestleMania, and with the way you know Stephanie talked about WrestleMania forty being the you know her like the WrestleMania she's most proud of. I mean, they didn't come out and say you know we're not with Vince McMahon anymore, but they pretty much did. Um, it's, I think the whole show was about getting over the fact that Cody's the guy and also that Vince McMahon is not part of this company anymore without saying it overtly. Um, and then yesterday you've got Triple H out there declaring it the Paul Levesque era himself, which I couldn't believe. Um, wh- what do you make of, of the, the, the company taking time to, you know, spin the political narrative the way they want it to go here with, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, away from Vince and over to, Hey, you know, if this is, uh, you know, this is our company now. And, uh, not only is it ours, but we, we just put on the biggest WrestleMania of all time too. Yeah. I'd say, first of all, the better strategy to like get rid of Vince from a narrative standpoint would probably be like to show some bad footage of him. Um, (laughs) Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, just too easy of a comparison. Um, yeah, no, that was a layup. Them. That was a layup. Yeah. They're feeling themselves, is my analysis for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, and they, should... uh, they, yeah, they, I mean, it's deserved, I would say. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, same thing like Cody. I think if Triple H comes out every couple weeks and was like, is it, aren't I great? <laughs> then, uh, you know, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. But if, hey, you'd like have worked your ass off. You in your mind probably saved the company from itself. Nick Khan probably is telling you that too, and being the ultimate Nick Khan to everybody. Um, then, uh, yeah, I mean that's fine. And everyone loves Triple H, and I think most people think the same way Triple H does at this moment in time. Um, he's going to you know win Booker of the Year. He's not going to celebrate that explicitly, but you know that's that's like all this rolled into one. So. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, 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 I agree. I mean, I'm with you. I think uh, they did it. You want to call it out. I have no problem with them doing that. I I applaud Stephanie with the dig in front of 72,000 people, um, you know, at WrestleMania. And now just let it go. Like, I think Triple H has shown, so far anyway, like a propensity to, like, not be on TV and not be the center of this. Um, I think it's okay to, like, take a victory lap. Uh, but then now stop, you know, and, and my guess is that that's what's going to happen. But it also is Triple H. So you, you never know. I think I think he has an ego. I'm not sure, but I think so. Or at least he used to. Yeah, he'll uh, just, you know, you pivot it to now like, hey, this is the biggest PLE in Europe we've ever done in a couple of weeks. So you can like mm-hmm. boast about that and like be explicit and like and, and, you know, get those get those quarterly bonuses as like a middle manager a sales manager, right. Of like, Oh sweet. I won this, the set of steak knives for having the most sales this quarter. Like, yeah, look at me, which is fine. Like just, yeah, just do that each. If you got something to brag about, do it. But you know, doesn't last forever. I wonder if CM Punk is mad that the rap got a better WrestleMania payday again uh, than him. Punk. No, he probably took it in stride. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty laid back guy. Mm-hmm. Pretty laid back guy. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Zach chiming in. Tyson didn't interfere in the match. No, I know he didn't interfere, but like he double crossed his guy, like his guy, like his guys. Like he had Austin had help, is my point, I guess. Um, maybe it's a weaker point than what I'm trying to say here, but I think it stands. It stands. So there. So there. Um, I wanted to, I got the last thing on the list and then we're going to wrap up. Um, you kind of alluded to this. I, I prefer these post WrestleMania Raws. I like, I'm glad that the silliness is, is kind of like gone with it now. Like that. It's, it's not just about crazy, like debuts, 
It's not about, you know, the little like dance thing for Fandango. It's not about um, beach balls and like funny chants. Like I'm, I'm, I thought the show, like if you went in expecting that stuff, you'd, I'm, you know, you'd be like, yeah, dang, what happened? Like, this is terrible. Um, but I think the show was just better off, like not having that a part of this, like, and you could just get down to business, do your thing, have a, f- a fun show. And yes, it, 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 it makes the show kind of fade into the lane of traffic as all other Raws. Um, but I think the silliness kind of ran its course. So were you disappointed that you didn't, that we didn't get any more of that great wackiness last night or like bizarro world as a uh, Michael Cole yeah. has called it. So like where's, where, where was Tama Tonga's big debut, right? Like, no, I mean, yeah, there's not yeah, even exactly. anyone available with AEW. There's not like the ready-made like, Hey, this person, you know, Russo has been gone for five years. So let's bring him back for a big pop, right? Like that's just right. not part of the business anymore either. I do yeah. like the NXT, like soft call-ups of like, Hey, Here's this person that you should really look forward to. Also, they're going to be available to be drafted. So definitely they're, you know, like Dragon Off is up. And this is like, I'm going to show myself here. Who's the NXT champion right now? Did he lose? Drag- Dragon Off. Okay. So oh, he is. He's still. Okay. <laughs> so he's coming up well, and like, uh, vacating. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he, okay. won the, he retained the title over the weekend. Okay. I My guess is they do something with, with Trick Williams. Um, yeah. That was going to be my guess, but I know he fought Carmelo, so I know neither of them were champions. So, no, uh, no, but I think they got time before. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know if they're going to do it before. It's then, the end of the month, yeah. So they've got some know. time if they want it. Yeah. Anyway, but like that's a good soft. Like, hey, Dra- Dragon off and Roxanne Perez, and you know, I think was there anyone else I'm missing from the no, NXT? Yeah, but those are two huge names that are, you know, going to be good additions to the roster. So, like that sort of stuff, like. You know, we used to have the like big NXT call up, but this is like the hey, like if they make it, they make it. But like, you know, there's not this, you know, um, oh my god, what was Malachi Black's name? Uh, Alistair Black. Alistair Black. Thank you. Uh, you know, not the like coffin raising up with all the candles, like, hey, here's his first time. Like, this guy's a huge star, and then you don't do anything with him, right? So, like, yeah. setting expectations at like a level of like, hey, we like you. We think you're good. We think you're going to make it at this level, but like, we're not going to make you like the next Undertaker before you do anything on the main roster. And Vince decides to drop you yeah. after. Vince doesn't know weeks. who you are anyway. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. So I like all of that way better. It's more adult, more professional, et cetera. Yeah. yeah I do too. And uh, the, uh, I, you know, I will talk about this as the weeks lead up, but mm-hmm. you know, the way that like, I'm interested to see how this regime approaches the draft. I know, um, me too. Like, because like the draft, a real draft. The, is it a real? Yeah, is it a real yeah. draft? It'd like, be awesome. I'd be so hyped if there's yeah. like a real like NFL draft, like whatever. Even if it's on Pete, like put it on Peacock. Put it on Peacock. And, yeah, and do it like an event that's free at T-Mobile, and mm-hmm. it's like a panel with like Paul Heyman and whatever uh, Rosenberg, whoever you want, Booker T. Like, oh. Booker, how's this person? Oh. You, you've called their matches for five years. Like, I don't know who this is. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Um, like I mean, guys they farm the, out everything else. Like, why not yeah. that? Like, guys in the green room that have been, you thought he'd be picked long ago. And it's like, whoever, Kevin, Kevin Owens is sitting there pissed that he's like the 22nd pick. And he, like, yeah. he uses that in storyline or Chad Gable, whatever. Like, oh, mm-hmm. it'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really curious as to how they do this, like, or if they if they change it. I mean, I think they'll have some elements changed. I think mm-hmm. it's due for a complete makeover. Um, so I hope that that's what it gets. It was interesting that they like framed the NXT talent as like this person declared for the draft. Um, mm-hmm. Like it's how college they, sports. Yeah, like it's like, like it's, NXT's like, college yeah. sports. <laughs> I mean, like that's how they tried to frame it. So I'm wonder. I wonder if yeah. that's going to play into this at all. We don't know yet. Something to watch, though, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys. Uh, we'll wrap up there. Zach is reminding everybody to go vote in the final four of our TV uh, theme song uh, bracket challenge that's uh, been heading up in the Discord um, community um, since the start of March Madness. Been been fun. Um, you get access to that and, and you get to interact with these guys and, and women on uh, in our uh, uh, Discord community as a member. You can become a member by heading to 
Brass Ring Media, excuse me, on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. Um, also, I want to get through one super chat and excuse me, Adam. I, I was about to, I had it highlighted. I didn't know if you were because I was like, hey, I don't know what this is about, but I yeah. love it. I don't know what 43 is about, Adam. Um, I want to say maybe it's somebody's age. Like, like, is it CM Punk's age? I don't know. I hope I don't look 43. Yeah. like <laughs> maybe That's what Adam is saying. Yes, Tyler's 40 years old. So, yeah. Adam, if you're still uh, with us. Or, he's, or George, he's talking about George Bush, 43rd president, 43rd George, president. George W. Yeah. Bush. Because uh, yeah, Obama's 40. Yeah, because Biden's 46. Trump's 45. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, Adam, if you're still there, drop a live chat um, and uh, explain yourself, sir. Jack Perry's 2K rating. <laughs> Is that. <laughs> oh adam that's ice cold man that's ice cold oh i love it i love it all right thank you guys thanks to our super chatters um thank you to everybody who listened live this is uh, one of the bigger shows we've ever done um so appreciate you guys for being here um on youtube and on twitter um thank you thank you um if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel please do um we've got live content all week long and we've got um different videos that hit the video all week long too. So you're not going to want to miss any of that. So subscribe, uh, hit the notification button. So you know when we're live, I will be live tomorrow um, with the spotlight show right here on the Brass Ring Media YouTube channel. We're going to have, uh, I'm going to be interviewing my wife, a casual fan who watched WrestleMania, um, participated in a lot of the WrestleMania madness. And uh, I've purposely not, picked her brain on too much um because yeah. is I she in the room because you kept looking over to your to your left there does she like uh have a gun to your head about to make sure you say nice things or what's going she's on she's in the room um okay. and, uh, <laughs> she uh will be here tomorrow on the show to yeah. talk with y'all and uh you know I, I i'm laughing because it's funny and it's my wife and she's great but I'm excited to get like a true opinion of like, hey, you you don't know any of this. Like, what worked, what didn't, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, how did the Cody thing play? Perfect uh, barometer. The, perfect barometer. So yeah. we're gonna put the spotlight on that. Um, that's, and also talk about other WrestleMania things. That's why I've laid off uh, Pat McAfee recently because my wife loves Pat McAfee, and I'm like, I cannot believe I got the papers ready. But besides that, <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But uh you know she's like oh he's like fun i was like oh okay you know it's me I, if I you should... say so tyler's yeah. wife i mean i mean being ha like having fun with wrestling is something i kind of wish i could do more often if i'm being honest with everybody but so, it is it is what it is it is what it is it is what it is. oh and so one last thing on the to pitch yeah. the patreon before i forget before you do the outro stuff yeah in your opinion zach has anyone had like as strong not that strong doesn't mean good i mean just like difference of opinion of that main event than me like have you seen other people anywhere that like didn't like it as much as i did or is it am i like kind of unlike um, I'm pretty i'm pretty far on a spectrum i think right you were pretty far on a spectrum yeah yeah, yeah you are just a reason to go listen to the patreon it is <laughs> it is i mean and i would say like you didn't just rant and rave i mean you had like concrete reasons and like good examples well well worth a listen for sure um but you are on an island a little bit my friend um, hey that's fine with me. Like being on that. yeah that's why kidding. we're here we it's wouldn't have a show out. if we were like yeah. you know yeah. on the panel for nxt or doing the kickoff show or getting fed information from evps right so you know we're here we're yes. our own men with our own opinions exactly exactly well, we're gonna end it on that note Guys, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. I'll see you all tomorrow, and then we'll be back with another flagship on Thursday afternoon. Thanks so much. Later.